to make you money so it's it's worth it you, you know yada 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 probably if, if i can if i well, it's can. not probably here's the thing when it comes to business there's no problems it's yes or no okay okay that's pretty fair right I, I was when, when it, yeah when it comes to business you uh, you know figure out what all of your overhead costs are so your parts okay. labor right well, if, you know are, are you planning on on um you know like some small businesses start off they pay themselves a salary or they pay themselves a commission for each unit sold shipping and handling uh you know taxes across state line your sales tax another state's sales tax federal tax there's all kinds of things that go that are involved in just than just going for it yeah okay no, that's pretty fair that's pretty fair uh you think i should you think i should sell my guinea pig oh that's wrong Ian. i'm sorry I mean, this I, I, costs me a lot of money. Do you have any? Do you have any regular questions? Like, yeah, I have I don't. I'm sorry. I, I'm really into money, and I like capitalizing on shit. And so, you feel like you're you're smart enough, like you're pretty damn smart to capitalize, you know? Because it's like, you 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 you. Well, you never get anywhere. I mean, you, you think your your aspect. You're never gonna get anywhere in life. <laughs> I mean, you, you you can't just revolve around money. Okay. Okay. You know what? You, you have a great day, sir. Oh. Yeah. more important things than money isx is what is it isx oh what's up how you doing ma'am i also feel like i'm in a simulation <laughs> nice. why, why, why do you feel that way Cause I, I just do. Cause I, I, you know, I document things. I say, you know, I, I, I document everything and then I have autism. So I'm repetitive already. So, you do know, you and, feel like, and, like there's occurrences where you just feel like this is out of the ordinary. It's not out of the order, not necessarily out of the ordinary. Just it's, you know, it's happened before more than once, you know, things deja vu. Oh no. Nah, deja vu is scary though. Right. You get it. You think you talk about um like traumatic brain injuries or, um, not understanding the social structures that that you normally exist in th that deja vu c you know can cause a little bit of issues if you don't understand but i just think it's a simulation <laughs> you think that they're out to get you i don't i'm not saying anybody's out to get me i'm just in a sim i, I mean I there's always like there's always going to be somebody i should rephrase that there's always going to be good people and bad people oh everywhere right <laughs> right there's always going to be good people there's always going to be bad people there's you know, I, I've had people out to get me for a long time. You know, if you think about some of the information I share, people don't like it. It costs people a lot of money, right? If, if, if I can teach you how to fast and heal yourself, I'm costing a doctor money. I'm costing somebody valuable, you know, what they consider valuable income from you. If I can okay. save you money, it costs somebody else money. It, you know, and, and that's and, what um, it's all about. People revolve yeah, so it, much around money. It, yeah. I, 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 money it, like like that last guy who wanted to like sell his bum ass gun but <laughs> yeah yeah i mean uh, greed is a is a very powerful tool you know it, it's very, it can be can be wielded incorrectly what do you think the, do you think the worst character trait is freaking greed yeah i i along with that i say pride too but you, you know, yeah, greed and pride. But most, I think, mostly greed, because greed opens the door for all kinds of stuff. And and I say greed because people don't really understand the meaning of greed. When you say greed, people are like, "Oh, somebody's hoarding money." No, greed is hoarding knowledge. Though. Yeah, yeah, you know, hoarding scientific knowledge, hoarding religious knowledge, hoarding, you know, anything medical knowledge that they don't want to share. It's yeah, stingy yeah. with with anything. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I think greed because it opens the door for so much other chaos. Mm. You know, I think it opens the door for so much other chaos. I agree. Nice. Yeah, take care, man. You have a great day. God bless. <laughs> oh, this beauty got me paying attention. Let's see, skater cereal. Skater cereal. It's very interesting.
Oh, that was quick. Uh, what happened if you escaped the simulation? Um, nothing really. It's just very, de you know, it's very depressing outside the sim. How you doing, sir? Hey, what's up? How you doing, Martin? Pretty good. I had a question about, um, if it's all right to ask about, uh, what's it called? Trauma and healing. Seeing, you know, how far you've come, I guess, in your experiences. Um, see, well, for me, I have a lot of traumatic experiences as well. And a teacher of mine once told me, don't compare your chapter five to somebody else's chapter 20. But then I thought, well, I could learn from that. Well, I was wondering if you could provide some insight on like what are some little things that I don't that you haven't really like shared just yet uh, to help yourself move on and learn about your own mind and how to accept it as something that actually happened, if that makes sense to you. Well, what do you mean by something that actually happened? So, uh, if you're concerned about not knowing if something actually happened or not, I would suggest start documenting everything. Mm. So um, that's one of the most powerful things I've ever been taught. When I was a uh, a, a little kid, you know, bad things happen. And yeah. um, I had a, an older, you know, veteran guy tell me, you know, when it comes between a child and an adult uh, t telling me something or, or anybody, we're always going to side with the adult. Mm -hmm. He goes, but when it comes with between a child with a cassette tape or a video or a picture telling me something. Mm -hmm that can't be disproven because of the cassette tape, the videos or the pictures compared to an adult. I'm always going to go with what the cassette tape, the video and the pictures state. Well, because it's evidence that you can look back on. Yeah, that makes perfect sense. So with my, well, with memories, like you don't, but you and I both know that like memories are one of those things, like they're not always reliable. Well, they, at all. No, they're, they're never reliable. So, do you have a photographic memory? No, I have. Well, what is, what do you mean by photographic memory? Like I can remember every detail or yeah. now we're going to, yeah. So we get somewhere we study human psychology where you said memory is not, you know, not always reliable. It is never mm. reliable. We rely on the consensus of, of everybody else's memory to back up our fallible memory. Meaning you don't, you, you know, not very many people have a photographic memory. You don't remember what you did 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days. You just don't. You you have people. My short-term memory is very bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have people in your in your life, and they you know people have you in their life that you guys all rely on each other's collective memory to kind of give you guys hmm. uh, you know pacify your psychological need to feel that you ha like you have a good memory because if you understand you really don't, it gets pretty scary in the world. But you know. Um, mm. An hour ago, what position were your hands in? Where were they exactly? What time is it? Twelve thirty. Uh, probably in my pockets. I was getting a haircut. But you know, probably in your pockets. But were they in your pockets? Oh uh, no, that makes sense. Oh wow. Oh. See, look, yeah, no, you can't really tell. Yeah, see what I'm saying? So your, but your, yeah. you, you know, your brain allows you to believe your memories are 100 percent correct. So when you said that, my, oh, my hands were in my pocket. You don't know that, but you your 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 brain allows you to imagine them in your pocket, so you don't have to worry about not remembering what happened an hour ago. Because it gets pretty scary. You go, I don't remember where my hands were an hour ago. What what was no, I? Looking? They weren't there at all. Exactly. Yeah, I'm just kidding. But, you know, it, it, it starts to add, add up. You know, like okay, you you don't know where your pockets, your hands were exactly positioned were an hour ago. What what words were coming out of your mouth exactly an hour ago? What's yeah, there's no way to tell. So you don't even you, you don't know what your hands were doing, and you don't even know what your mouth was saying an hour ago. But your memory is is solid, right? We've raised you to believe your memory is great. Is it really? Mm. I remember reading on a study that you know the human memory, like actually, is out of a lot of the I guess animals in the animal kingdom, human memory is actually pretty bad in comparison. Like crows, for example, I have crows outside. They remember my face down to the every last detail. If I wear a yep. mask, if I go outside wearing my mask, they have a hard time recognizing me. And I can tell that because they don't approach me like they normally do. Yeah. Whereas if I'm not wearing my mask, 
the crows recognize me and they approach me and because they trust me. I, so that, I guess that's a good example. Hmm. Yeah, the, the, the whole, the, you know, memory is a very funny thing. It's it's confusing. Um, yeah. <laughs> that's for sure. Yeah, when you start studying it, uh, you start studying human memory. You go, man. They don't re- they don't know anything. They don't remember anything. Everything they're telling me is just something their brain made up. It's not even real. You mm. literally you start in psychology. You start studying people and for memory c- come in front of you. Like where were your hands? What were you doing? They're like, you're like ninety nine percent of the shit out of your mouth. You just made your 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 brain hallucinated so that you didn't believe you had a bad memory, so you wouldn't be scared that you don't remember nothing. Ninety nine percent of people, you know, over ninety nine percent of people do you that. Think it's like. Do you think it's like an automatic coping skill? Yeah, there you go. It's a, 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 something you do automatically to satiate your psych- your your psychology's need to feel safe in it's in in the in in the belief that your memories are a hundred percent. Like you, you know, you, you you have a very strong memory. I don't need to worry about nothing. My memory's perfect. Well, that's good. But but you know, is that? Well, Martin, I, I go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. I said, but is that you no, know you you're telling yourself that? I don't need to, you know, I don't need to worry about nothing. My memory is a hundred percent real. Is it like I, I, I document things that happen in my life and, and, and um, not to speak ill of it, you know, you know, for, for, and I learned this from, from some very important people. When you videotape people who, who, who have jobs to do in the public, even what they remember isn't real. You know, people are, you know, we talk about, you know, body cams for police officers and things like that. People mm-hmm. don't understand the need for that. But we, we, we can, in, in police officer psychology, when they study their own stuff, over 90% of their reports don't actually match what happened. Because police officers yeah. don't have photographic memory. <laughs> you name one police officer, I, name one police department that says we only hire officers with a photographic memory. It, it, <laughs> there's not one that does that. You go, okay. So let, let's study that psychology in, in, in the, in the you know, reports that the police officers do where there's actual videotape. Over 90% does not match. It doesn't. It, yeah. 90% well, of the time, they're not me- remembering something correctly. Well, that's very scary. So we don't talk about it. You go, what do you mean nine out of 10 times a cop writes something down? It's not exactly what happened. Or nine out of 10 times a teacher and I don't mean to you know single out cops, but just anybody in general. Nine out of ten times, it's not a hundred percent right. But we yeah. we've raised and you. I, I have like we've raised personal experiences that were documented. Sorry, Martin, I, I'm not meaning to interrupt you. No, that's right. So, but we've raised you to not recognize that. So you just always assume what they're saying is a hundred percent correct. Uh, anybody of authority, mm-hmm. not just police, but you know, firemen, a politician, a you know. And parent teacher parent teacher you're raised to believe what they're telling you is 100 percent correct when over 90 percent of the well time as a not. kid that's how you make that's how you like learn your new experiences and like you know as a kid you go into the world and you don't really know a whole lot so you look to the people who have had those experiences and you trust their judgment um now we get in the, the sense where now we're getting somewhere now you're getting somewhere mm-hmm. you trust their judgment and so you learn you grew up learning to, to mm. it's acceptable for your memory to just fill in the blanks. Hmm. Yeah. And then you have, um, you know, trust, I guess, could play a huge role in, uh, what's it called? Your memories, too. Because a lot of our experiences are spent with other people. So, like, you know, when you're, like, with, a, like, a friend or something and you're t- trying to tell a story, like, let's say you and your wife had an event and you're trying to share that memory with them, but you don't have any physical documentation. For example, you know, your live streams. You, you shared a, an interpersonal moment with your wife and you're trying to tell somebody about this moment and you both agree, oh, yes, this happened. Do you think that's where, like, you know, that foundation of trust helps improve what are these comments? Sometimes these comments are ridiculous. Yeah, you've got um, it, uh, it does but help. You think- it does help. You know, but that's yeah. the same thing. Relying on your loved one's memories is the same thing as relying on a politician's or police officer's or cops or anybody else. Exactly. It, it, relying on it doesn't mean it, it, they're correct. It just means that's somebody your psychology went, even though they're not, even though they don't remember 100% either, I feel better. 
aligning my, you know, my psychology feels better aligning with their memory. Yeah. It's like, that you, makes a lot of sense. Yeah. You, you're like, you know, yeah. I mean, yeah. Your loved ones like, yeah, I know their memory isn't great either, but they're my loved ones. So. Yeah. You trust them. Mm-hmm. Because, I mean, hey, Martin, no I got how, they, usually, how, how you're, sorry, no matter how your loved one remembers stuff, they usually, mm-hmm. even though their memory fills in the blanks, it doesn't fill in blanks to put themselves in personal danger, per se. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? They're, they're, you, your psychology, right? When we were, we're going over a trestle that might be missing some, some, some railing and things like this. And like, do you remember how to cross the bridge? You're going to say yes, right? And even though you don't remember exactly which ones are broken right now, and you know where not to step mm-hmm. right now when we get there right you're going to remember so i can i can feel a level of trust in you because your your memory is going to try and protect you and and get you through the situation as well hmm. does that make sense that does make sense so once you have an experience your brain associates that with okay i can trust this if it go, if all goes well mm-hmm. okay and I was watching a video about sound recently and how, like, it, it was, it, it, it might sound a little weird, but like Five Nights at Freddy's and its use of sound. I was watching this video. I don't play a whole lot of video games personally, but um, I was watching it and they were talking about how sudden sounds that you don't expect or, and how that can jump out at you and cause, you know, you can get startled. Then you have the absence of sound where, you know, that's, where you expect there to be a sound, but there isn't one, and that somehow creates an intensity. And it's like you have these experiences. So let's say you have the second second five nights of Freddy's, what they gave, gave for an example. I know I'm getting somewhere. Don't worry. Um, they there is a lot of sound that involves loud jump scaring, loud uh, experiences. So once you go into the third one, which is a very different uh, game they actually utilize the sound in a different way. So you don't exactly trust what you're, you know, playing and hearing. So it's your memories from the second one you played, the one you played prior to this one, it affects your ability to do the third one. And then the fourth one does the same thing, but it takes something different that was different from the other two that you played. So I guess that's... I don't know if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> I, I do, have a I hard do. time yeah. wording. Yeah. My- uh, associate, associating okay. sounds or sounds associate memories, you know? Yes. All your senses do. I mean, like, you know, a child yes, learns yeah. not to touch a red hot burner because they burn themselves. Yep. I mean, then you have, you know, you learn not to go near this cat when it's tail. You don't, you learn not to go near the dog that's tails tucked between its legs because you don't want to get bit, you know, little things like that little like uh events that happen to you you learn once and you only need to learn them once but i guess what my now my question is is if you were to take a risk and try something new how much stuff do people not know because they tried it once and the outcome wasn't as it normally is you know what i mean like a lot now you're getting somewhere holy moly you know you know um you're the the level of information you have dictates your observation but that doesn't mean your level of information you have allows you to have an observation where you walk away with even three percent of reality Hmm. yeah for example i recently learned um you know with the crows that i was telling you about earlier that when they peck at the ground in front of you that's for the crows that are here, I live in, uh, or I live around the Boston area. Yeah. Um, when they peck at the ground, it that's how they ask for food. Um, I didn't know that until uh, I was, you know, walking down the road. I think I was eating something. Um, and uh, there was, I think I dropped something and then a crow ate it and they pecked at the ground. And I was like, oh, you know where that comes that's from? what that means. The, the vibra- vibrations. What? It stimulates the grubs and worms in the ground to come up. So if you can get like a piece of a flexible piece of rebar or something and just stick it, you know, get like a four foot one, put it like two feet in the ground and just make it go boom, 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 and watch. If you do that a few times, because you, you can't peck really have the, you don't have the um, ability to peck the ground like a crow has developed over, over mm-hmm. evolution, but you can replicate those kind of vibrations with a, with a metal rod and the worms and the bugs come to the top. 
but yeah, but you're saying pecking is, 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 is how they ask for food. But yeah, they peck the ground and the bugs come up. It's as if they're asking for them to come up to be eaten. Oh, okay. Like peck the so they so in a bird's brain or like those crows' brains, they peck the ground and they get food normally. So when they do it on the sidewalk where the grubs won't come up, they're we saying, "Hey, I'm hungry." Yeah, hey, I'm hungry. That's and, how you they throw, and you throw them food. It works mm -hmm. in the grass and it works on the on on the sidewalk. I think the only difference the only difference is is that with when it comes to the grass, there doesn't need to be a human around to do that. Nope, exactly. But with the sidewalk, there needs to be a human. Exactly. So basically, the the birds noticed like when I peck the ground here, grubs and, and worms come up and things for me to eat. Let me see if it works over here. And they do it in front of you, and you feed them. So they you know they they took what they learned somewhere else for their memory, and went, I'm going to apply it to this guy who I don't remember ever doing it before, but we'll just see if it works. And then you feed them and that becomes their memory. Like, yep, pecking the ground for worms works and pecking the ground for bread works. Hmm. You know, Martin, I've been watching a lot of your videos recently just because, you know, I find it interesting. And a lot of people <clears throat> I've noticed, they ask a lot of questions, rightfully so. But I've, I've always been the type of person who takes other people's stories, experiences, documentation, and I learn from that. Because I've, I've noticed that a, a common thing that I think people sh really should consider utilizing is not only learning from their own experiences, for example, the kid poking their finger on the burner, but also other people's experiences. But that's not to say, like, you know, you can't learn for yourself. <clears throat> you know, it's like, I, I find that when I, when learning from somebody else, until I decide to utilize that information that I absorbed, and put it to use for myself and experience those experiences myself, I don't fully grasp any concepts until I have had both intakes, if that makes sense. Yeah. So you, uh, do you, you ever walk through that, walked in the, the shoes? Person. Yeah. So yeah, I, it's like I need to share somebody's shoes in order to completely understand how comfortable they are. Like they can tell I, me all oh, these I, shoes I, are I, so I so totally, comfortable. I, I totally get that. You know, I, I do things you talk about watching watching my video. I I do things just sometimes just because somebody else did them and it, you know they got a good mm -hmm. result or a bad result and and they're asking me my perspective. I'm like, I don't know, let me walk I don't I don't know. Let me walk in your shoes. I, I you know there's a mm. um, there's a guy there's a there's a TikTok page, a guy, Matt's all right. Uh, you know, um mm -hmm. he, he had a um a panic attack in a mall with, with his kid in a stroller, if I remember a hundred percent correctly, or, you know, you know, and, and, um, I listened to him talk about the situation and how people, he was approached and, and, and stuff like that. And, um, I personally happened to have a, a, a mall where I had to go and walk in circles, you know, when I had a traumatic brain injury and when I got it, went, finished some schooling stuff and, um, mm -hmm. <clears throat> I, I I knew I, I couldn't walk specifically in his in his footsteps for the for the panic attack part, but I could you know um, I know because I know I have autism I know people don't like it, so I, I knew because of the, you know my autism I would be put in a similar state so I could get his perspective. I could understand mm. what it feels like in that situation of a, of a panic and people don't know how to deal with you. You know what I mean. And so I get what you're yeah, saying. Yeah, I know what you mean. Walking in somebody else's footsteps, I I, I try that as as much as possible. Uh, for, for yeah. Because how do you understand something if you don't look at it through their eyes? And how do you look at it through their eyes if you weren't standing in their shoes in the direction that they were looking? Yeah, I'm trying to think of like an analogy that works for this. It's kind of like, you know how you can't, when you throw a pebble in the water, you can't get the same ripples in the same spot. Or like yep, when you exactly. take a cup of water in a pond, you pour it back, you can't get the same water back. But so, so this is, uh, you know, you throw a, 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 you know, a pebble in a pond and you get that ripple, that wave that will erode the foundation of a building. I, I can't throw a rock in and replicate that, but I can still replicate the ripple so that I can watch how mm. the waves erode a foundation. That's really insightful. Right. I can, I can still, That's actually, right. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I can't throw a rock in that exact same spot and rep, replicate those exact same ripples. 
that, that, that eroded the foundation of a building, but I can study all the other ripples that I might make so, so that I can see how yeah. to affect that foundation. Hmm. That makes sense. Thank you, Martin. I appreciate this talk. I do have to get going. Before I go, I would like to show you something. I, I don't know if you, I think I saw you smoke a, a video of you smoking uh, marijuana. Yeah. But uh, I got this. It's a lighter with a pickle on it. Pickle it Rick. Pickle. pickle Rick. Yeah, Pickle Bick. Pickle Bick. <laughs> That's hilarious. Pickle Bick. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, have a good day, Martin. Thank you. God bless. You as well. Go live. All right. Hey, Martin. Good morning. What's going on? How long, been, how long have you been following me? Um, probably a little over a year now. So, before, you know, through one or two resets? Yeah, through at least one, I believe. That was when I was dissecting everything, and I started to realize the gravity of everything. Huh. Yes, I sir. feel like I'm in a hardcore simulation. <laughs> <laughs> another day, another sim. I think so, man. Oh, but um, I'm just sitting here with the little chewini right now. Nice. Got a cute little lap dog. But um, a solid simulation. Three years almost. Some of them follow me for a while. Yeah, no, I, I, I. Uh, it's funny. I knew about your account before, but I never followed you that long. So I, I've known you for probably about two years, but never really followed until about a year and a half. But um. I wanted to talk a little bit about uh, theology. I know we've, you know, we've discussed right. a lot of these things before, but um, yeah. I was just talking to my girlfriend a little bit about everything, um, and I was trying to explain to her because she's Jewish as well, and uh, she got like, you know, she got a little offended, and I was kind of like, you know, upset and a little shocked that she was so offended by that. But I was just trying to talk to her about, you know, the Tower of Babel and just how things predate Abrahamic religions, and I was just wondering if you we could. We can't help get mad at her. Stuff. You have to yeah, understand no. cognitive dissonance. Mm -hmm. it's not her fault that we, you know, we have a, this thing in psychology called cognitive dissonance where, where you, you can't control it when your brain has two sets of beliefs that contradict each other you're usually going to align with or, or two you know two sets of yeah two sets of beliefs that contradict each other you're gonna usually 90 over 90 percent of the time you're going to align with whatever belief uh, uh, your parents align with whether it's factual or not yep which makes sense because like you know She's, it's weird. It's, she doesn't consider herself and I wouldn't consider her an Orthodox Jew, almost like a conservative Jew. You know what I mean? Like practices on holidays, but you know, doesn't do all the other things. Um, so I was just wondering if you could perhaps go a little bit more in detail, um, especially for other people in the chat too, about, you know, the tower of Babel and the significance of it. And uh, so it's, it's, the one, it's the most significant thing in Abrahamic religions in Judaism, Islam, and Christianity It is the most significant thing there is. I mean, they tell you, you know, man, in, in all of his infinite wisdom, tried to create towers to God, right? They tried to create towers to God. And people take that literal, like they tried to build towers all the way to God. Yeah. No, 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 no. They built towers, pyramids, and the, with all of the information to get to God, not climb up to the sky to God, to find God. You know, um, Exodus. Right, we were covering that the other day. Exodus. What what is Exodus in Judaism? The slaves escaping from Pharaoh and uh, migrating to find Israel. Right. So, um, very interesting. So you have some some escaped slaves or some slaves reading these towers of Babel, and all they can read is Israel. And 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 you're told, you know, it, it exists somewhere in the light. Mm -hmm. and, and you know without the education but what is the light we're not really sure let's go one you know let's go find it exodus though i mean they tell you the the, the, the these slaves were reading these towers that were Babel because they couldn't read them they weren't egyptian they were they were people from other cultures other countries they could not read egyptian they had no idea what the information was saying but you know there's information on tabernacles making a tabernacle or, or you know a monstrance what's they called a sun disk in egypt so that you could see Israel, Elohim. Yeah. How significant are those towers of Babel? They're very significant because they specifically tell you 
how it is in Judaism, they were expected to see Yahweh or how in Islam you're expected to see Allah or how in Christianity you're, expect, you're expected to see Jesus, right? You're, you're not born with the condition to see it. Mm-hmm. Well, how do you do it? Well, I, you don't know if you don't actually study like you're required to. Yeah, exactly. And I also thought it was kind of fascinating too, how um, I was just doing some etymology and the, uh, the Hebrew word for Babel um, means to confuse which I thought was pretty fascinating as well. Now we're getting somewhere. Now, when I take um, the Hebrew word for Babel to confuse, when I babble on language in linguistics, so it, the, the Hebrew word for Babel means to confuse. And when I babble on, what does babble on mean? Have you, have you ever Googled just babbling on when yeah, I babble on? It can be confusing, right? <laughs> it can be there you go. Exactly. It can be the city of Babylon, it could be anything. Right in the city of confusion, the towers of Babel, the towers of confusion. Can't read them. I mean, in Judaism, they told you, this is where we got our information from. And we did the best we could when we wrote the Torah. But we we got it from the towers of confusion. Because even when we did our best, 90% of the information still confused us. We still didn't understand it. Is that, is that in Genesis where they talk about the Tower of Babel? Like, could, could I find some, like, perhaps some quotes or something? I need to do more uh, biblical research. A, a, a good teacher points, a great student blazes the path. But, you know, um, the Towers of Babel, are, is, I, you're going to have to look mostly into Judaism. Gotcha. Christ, Christianity, we, they talk about it a lot in Islam and, and in Christianity, but they only, they only talk about it because it's information that was heard from Judaism. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, you know, if you're going, if you want sources, I would, I, I, you know, source old Jewish scripture. Yeah, definitely. I, all right, I got to do that because I was trying to find an, our, a way to articulate to her, um, you know, because she was like, no, God, Jewish Jewish people got their information from Moses, who got his information from the burning bush, and I didn't really know how to how to refute that point because. You, I think it's just hard to convince somebody otherwise if they are convinced that. Well, so here, this is where people don't understand. Um, I can show you a picture of that body of light in the burning bush. It exists. It, it, um, uh, Moses, uh, uh, Cain and Abel, Noah, it's all one body. And that's where, where we get somewhere like, you know, we had some highly educated people writing information on towers, pyramids, and then we had some slaves who didn't understand this stuff very well. So they, they, they broke the information down. Just like in, you think about the, the um, Noah, Moses, all those in the Bible, it's the same thing as Hinduism. Hinduism has a lot of different what they call gods. But at, at the end of the day, they tell you all of our gods are just personalities or traits of a singular God that has too much information for us to just understand if you give it as one person or one entity. Yeah. Which explains why you see the personification of the Hindu is God, the Hindu gods and Roman gods and Greek gods that kind of just, I mean, a lot of the times are just depictions of astrological movements of our own sun. And yeah, astrological movements of, 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 of our own sun in a specific place you know, at time in time exactly doing you know yeah gotcha but yeah i mean they i mean literally exodus right you're asking where do you get more information jewish scripture exodus where how did exodus from egypt take place where did they get their info and they, yeah, the information, and, and I, I get that that uh, that understanding. She's like, no, they got it from God. Yes, they did. But where did God give it? Right, and that's where the misunderstanding is. Yeah, the information came from God. But where did who and where did God give it? It's on the towers of Babel. Yeah, God gave mankind some information, and we put it on some pyramids. And all of our infinite, yeah. you know, yep, it did come from God. And that's where people just they take it, they take some. The things they shouldn't take literal, they take way too literal. And the things they should take literal, they don't take literal at all. Yeah, I I, get, I, I think I got like 95% of the way there of explaining it to her. I just think the biggest disconnect was she's like convinced of like the figures of these people and like is convinced that, you know, 
Moses got his information from Mount Sinai. You know what I mean? Like she, she believes just in, in the Torah itself. And when I brought Mount up, what? you know, Mount what? Mount Sinai. Now there's this is very interesting. Uh, there, there's a there's a capstone on 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 a on a tower from Babel that's 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 called Mount Sinai. Really. And and then they named a mountain after it later on. Wow. See, that makes sense. That makes a lot of sense. I mean, yeah, so, it had to have come from somewhere first, and then you can always rename a mountain later, right? Yeah, yeah. No, so the, I learned that in Jewish Jewish because I was wanted to. Um, I read this story. They told me this story when I was a kid about um, uh, Muhammad uh, climbing Mount Sinai and, and put, putting some scriptures in a cave and th- for 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 um, from from Islam, for Islam, you know, it, it, taking information. And in, in, I, I wanted to s- study that, study that, study that, and. Um, Old Jewish scripture, they're like, you know, b- before we named the mountain, it was the name of a, it was the name of a tower where all wow. where, where God gave all the information. It's a tower. It's an actual like a capstone. It's the name the the, 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 the uh, you know, Egyptian or Babylonian or Sumerian or whatever they named an actual. This is the this is a tower, yeah. and it, it, on that capstone named Mount Sinai. It actually has a picture of a guy with this, or I shouldn't say a guy, but a, you know, a stone figure dude carved into the rock, ho- holding a, holding a disc up to the sun. And then you follow the things along and uh, like, it shows you like, you know, a body of light with wings standing, like he did this. And then this showed up. Gotcha. And so where do you get the information from, from, for sun disc tabernacle monsters? You do get it from Mount Sinai, but it's not, it's the mount of a pyramid, not the mount of a mountain. And then we named a mountain. And they named a mountain after it, so just it like Israel. Right? We named a nation after the you know Israel is it from Egypt. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, it's in it's written all over the pyramids, and then we named an entire nation after after the fact. So if we're doing that for a whole nation that Palestine's fighting with, would we have done it with anything else? Yes, lots yeah, of things. Yeah, of course. Continue the Babel. Continue the confusion. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah, yeah continue continue it i guess i think people just didn't understand i think so, you know some people it, originally it was just out of confusion on accident you know babel i mean they call babel for a reason to confuse yeah it's confusing they didn't say we're, we're doing it to confuse no we're getting it as confusion we, we received information as confusion right they weren't telling you we're, we're taking information and we're going to make it confusing they said well, no we got information that was confusing it, we got it confusing, and we tried to make sense of it the best we could. Gotcha. And, and, and as human, you know, intelligence raises, that confusion goes away more and more and more. You go, yeah, yeah, you know, you're reading a story about literally on towers of Babel. Oh Moses, separating drinkable water from the Red Sea using a basket. Where did Oh Moses come from? At a, a basket out of the Red Sea. It's literally written on stones. And but it doesn't, it, you know, the 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 level of education you have when you read that, you know, with you know a farmer and a slave reading that, huh? There's a dude that came out of the thing, and it, you know, it, 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 and it separates the red separated the Red Sea. You think as a as a person, if that makes sense. You know, you go you go back and you know read the stories as as humanity's. Uh, basic understanding of natural sciences raises right we start to understand things more our brain god's giving us more brain capacity as as as, you know generations get under our brain gets stronger and stronger and go oh moses that's yeah it does separate drinkable water from the red sea and there's a key word there in the beginning you know in the beginning separates drinkable water from the red sea they leave drinkable out and they just say red sea but in the original scriptures it says drinkable water that's yeah. a very defining point. That's a very important detail, right? And I have that. Remember every detail. The devil's in the details. The devil's in the details. Oh, Moses separates drinkable water from the Red Sea. That that changes perspectives when you leave out that one little drinkable. So, has the Torah itself? I know we've talked about the Bible and how King James has perverted it, uh, the New Testament. But has the Old Testament and the Old Hebrew Bible was that? interpreted or misconstrued in any way by men I think it, no they just un, they you know understood it the best they could 
not mm -hmm. uh, you know misconstrued or messed up. No, we just understood it the best we could. We could, and that's where the where the I mean, Jewish nation. We they they are waiting in a Messiah. And what's the Messiah do? Reread the original information so we can have a better understanding. Yeah. I mean, you think about well, so the, the most interesting that thing about the Hebrew nation. We're awaiting a Messiah. And go. What is the what's that messenger going to do? Reread the original messages and give us a you know just tell us a different perspective that will be more closer to what we understand today. With more, you know, and it, that's interesting. You're, you're going to tell you the whole story again of how the Son is born in the flesh and rises again, germination. Right? We're going to reread the whole thing again and give us a better understanding. I'm not going to get like it's not new information. It's just rereading the old thing with a better understanding now your brain reading that reading those hieroglyphs or even the torah reading it today with your level of education and intelligence do you do you think you're going to have a different you're going to walk away with a different story and a different understanding because of the basic information you have in natural sciences today than someone did a thousand years ago for sure especially as science has progressed and um, you know, having been gifted this information by you, this I don't even want, I don't even know how to describe it. Almost like a perspective, because it's almost kind of like you sit down with the Bible, you sit down with an ancient piece of literature, and you kind of put yourself in this mindset, and you take you take things very literally instead of trying to view things from a uh, a different Absolutely. point of view. So it's 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 a mindset shift because a lot of people go in there thinking that these are you know one hundred percent real people. This is this is a handwritten account of a real event that happened, and they're not thinking about the underlying meanings of the story. They're just thinking about the morals. Well, now and that's very important that you say that they're just thinking about the morals. Now we know in Judaism some of the stuff wasn't construed to be heinous or evil, but to make sure you understood the moral point first before you uh, before you gathered the power to enslave uh, an entire nation you know think of uh, osmosis in the desert back then if you could give everybody drinkable water you'd be a king you could you could you could be the a warlord right, be, yeah. right? so we, we want you to have that moral clause first like you know don't go killing everybody don't go being a bad person don't go you know trying to rage blah 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 you get but that more but here's point. how you do x and y exactly step by step. gotcha exactly and then you know say say me and you are reading that and, and i i don't i have that in me ah, enslaved capture enslaved i'm never going to get past that uh, you know reading moses i don't i don't get I, I get there's a moral point here but you know i'm i'm good that moral point's going to speak to me because i have a little bit of impurity and morality in my heart i'm never going to get past that you know, find that extra phrase like you might. If you didn't have that impure part, you'd get that extra verse. Drinkable water. Well, that changes everything. How did how did you get that extra verse? Drinkable water. How did you focus on that detail? Right. Your brain wasn't trained to latch on to the things that you needed to keep you moral and and keep you righteous. You were already righteous and you're already moral, so you're able to see past that stuff. Where unrighteous people and, and immoral people don't get past it. And that's the things they teach you from rob, you know, rabbis when you go to synagogue. Like there's things in, in the in the in the Torah that are there specifically to catch you, to to stop your impurities, to stop your immorality from spreading and getting worse. Wow. They're there for a reason. But then you go, you know, go you know, we've progressed so far. All those moral clauses are, do we need them for every, every, everybody else? Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I, I think humanity's advanced enough where the moral clauses aren't necessarily required because people are just born with the morals now, right? We, we gave you those moral clauses, right, well, for generations and generations because people didn't have them. Now, after 10 generations, children are just being born with those morals. And those children who are being born with those morals don't have those immoralities because they're born with them. Uh, catch getting them hung up on verses their ego is not like this has to be real because if it's not i'm gonna go to hell because i want to kill my neighbor sometimes when i fight with them sometimes i want to shoot you know you, you get people like yeah that. they're like ex it's kind of like a zero day exploit they're exploiting human emotions and trying to make you feel a certain way you know even though you're not like that you're not most people for that matter are not gonna you know want to kill their neighbor but you exactly. know that temptation might be there but it's never like you're actually gonna go do it and you need 
this piece of literature to always keep you in check. Yeah. So that temptation might be there. And if you have that temptation, right, that, that, that ember, that ember has the chance to be turned into a full on fire. So Mm -hmm. we don't fan those flames. We don't fan that ember so we can get some flames and catch a, you know, start a big fire. Right. We, we give you some, go, go work on this until it goes away and you know some people like you look at some people's Torah, some people's bibles and things they highlight the same verses about stealing and and robbing and you know killing and they read them every day yeah every single day thou shall not kill i i've, I've been to many many churches where the pastors like like you have that, that highlighted you're like you're a leader of a church and the most important verse for you to tell yourself every day is you shall not kill so yeah. like yep they're like, yeah, that's one of it's one, it's my highlighted verses. Yep, that's one of the, you know, my 50 verses that I read every single day. Thou shall not kill. And I, I think about that, like, you know, you, you get, an, a, you know, a 60-year-old lady and she doesn't have that highlighted. It never even crossed her mind. Like, I better, I better highlight this and memorize this verse every single day. That's very fascinating. Yeah, it, that, that psychologically was a- tricking herself. Yeah, but yeah, but I mean, you think about you know, not, not to be mean, but you got grown men that have to highlight that verse every and read it every day when they get up. Thou shall not kill. Thou shall not kill. Tomorrow when I get up, I'm going to read the verse. Thou shall not kill. When you read the whole Bible, that's the you know the grown men. Those are the verses you had to highlight and read to yourself every single day. Every single day. Yeah, I give the book to a ten year old kid, born in a different social structure, and that's not what he's highlighting. Yeah, he's highlighting John three sixteen. <laughs> right. God loves this world so much. Right. I I love that verse, Martin. Have you ever? I, I'm sure you have, but that verse, uh, God loved oh, the world so much son. that he, yeah. If if you would just change son to son instead of S O N to S U N, total different meaning change, and it just makes so much sense. Yeah, I had that yeah, epiphany yeah, a couple yeah, weeks ago. Yeah. God loved the world so much he gave his only begotten son. That gives us our daily bread. Turns water. when you change it to S U N, those miracles become facts of reality, things yeah. that you can prove. Literally. But I it, it, that. and that's why I talk about it in 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 the old days, and they, I think they might still do it today, for for for, the, for um, Judaism. I don't know if you had your bar mitzvah, but I had one. Um, <laughs> they teach you that that those, you know, Passover. All of that stuff, you know, if you, you know, as, as you go to school and you get an education, you start learning, you start learning, you know, switching that O to, to a U, you, you start getting closer to God you go, what, what, how does, how does that even make sense? You go, well, you, God is light and you're learning about how light gives you your daily bread, kills the bacteria that creates leprosy. You're learning about God's power. You're learning how God works. Yeah, you're learning how God works, right? So while I was learning how God works, uh, the perspectives I was given as a kid are, are now disproven. And dang, I'm an atheist. But the more I learn of these natural sciences, I went, man, this light really does give. It, it does sacrifice itself on a cross to create me in its image. It it does do all of those things, not the way I was told, but it does do it salvation from starvation it does do it that was a big thing in the jewish empire salvation from starvation the, the, uh, you know they didn't they, uh, nobody liked paying them pay, paying paying you know um the pharaohs for 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 bread you know you slaved all day long working and then you had to pay for food yeah pay for anything learn, really right Alcohol. yeah learn, 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 learning learning how to grow your own crops was a huge thing in Exodus. Be, being able to, uh, you know, set yourself free f- from man, from a man playing God. Yeah, exactly. You know, you had a, a Pharaoh like, "I'm your God. I am God on earth. I give you your daily bread." And you, you, Exodus, like, we learned that if we take the son of God in the sky and wrap its dead body in a shroud and place it in a tomb, it will rise again three days later, and God will give us our daily bread. Yeah, or we'll leave God out a piece of rotten salvation. fruit. Yeah, yeah. See, God will do it. They didn't have to rely on a man. 
I love that. That's it's. I love just hearing it. Yeah, I love just having these conversations because it just makes me feel so grateful for everything. You know, what I mean, just having the ability to have these thoughts and have the ability to think for yourself and have the ability, like you know what I mean, just understanding what all of our ancestors went through for us to get to this point. It's almost kind of a shame to keep following blind faith. It's a shame to not do your own research. Well, it, 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 I say that to, at this t today's given today's date. You know where we're at today. You know, um, I can give you the information so that you may see the Creator with your naked eye. I can teach you how to use one of those devices that allows the Pope, the the, the highest ranking rabbis in Judaism, the highest ranking. Um, I can't say the name. My stutter in in Islam, uh, the highest ranking people in 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 Hinduism, the highest ranking people in Buddhism. I can show you the device that the highest ranking people in every religion use to see a body of light that they say hasn't spoken to any one of them in over a thousand years. They can look at it, but it doesn't speak to them. And, and, and um, which is fascinating. So they, you know, every religion, Judaism, Vikings, you know, everyone, they have a device that allows them to see this body of light. I mean, they call it the seven colored rainbow body in Buddhism. And they all say, it hasn't spoken to anybody else, any of us that are looking at it, any of us that can use a device and look at it. It hasn't spoken to us in over a thousand years. And my thing is like, well, maybe you guys aren't the ones that are supposed to be looking at it. Maybe it's your people. Yeah. I mean, that, that begs the question too, when we, we talk about, you know, you know, divine intervention and morality, we've, we've already talked that God doesn't know morals morals as a human created thing so god how would god choose when and who to speak to and how would he know or what how would it know who is right to know it's, it's just that's just god's gift god's ability you know who are we to question you're right I, I, when i was a kid i talked i was like there's this body light that follows me with this stupid book and i don't want it I refuse to know, like, who are you, who are you to question, if it's real, who are you, Martin, to question what, 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 what we think is God? Who are you? Like, I'm, I'm the person that's offering the book to. I don't want it. But, you know, as I grew older, grow up, you think about that, like, who are you? Who, who are we to question how things work? That's true. Divine I mean, you know what I mean? Who are we? What gives us the right to question it? Um, it's a great question. The only response I could ever say is the fact that we're uh, the children of God. Or at least that's personally what I think. Well, now we get somewhere. But, so we're the children of God. So who are we? Are who are we to question it? Well, maybe it's not to question why, but how. Mm -hmm. how does yeah that's true not why I mean, why I don't really gets you so far exactly why well why is an opinion how right how that's, can be proven that's facts right why is our opinions hows are just facts of reality this is how you turn the thermostat up in my house right why we yes. turn it up is a matter of opinion Very good point. Very good point. It's a, it's a, you know, I mean, it's a, in, in Buddhism, you're, you're created in the image of the seven code rainbow body. And one day, one day, somebody's going to be born to teach you how. Well, you go, well, how? It will speak to, it's going to speak to somebody and tell them. Well, that's interesting. You know, in, in Christianity, just like Buddhism, uh, you're created in the image of that body of light. And one day, someone will be born to teach you how. Wow. You know, in Judaism, right, um, you're created in the image of the body of light. And one day, someone will be born to teach you how. In Islam, you're created in the image of God that has no earthly figure. No man has laid their eyes upon it. But someday, somebody will be born to lay their eyes upon it and teach us how we're created in its image. Hinduism, 
you are created in the image that is our singular God that we broke up into many, many personalities for many, many different gods. And one day, someone will be born to teach you how. Now we just got to find that person. Give me my timer. I think somebody did. <laughs> Give me my well, timer. Um, hopefully I can hop on a little later this afternoon, maybe change yeah. the subject a little bit. But uh, thank you again for the information, Martin. I'll certainly be relaying this to people. God bless. God bless. Spread the message.